So picking up where we left off last week, yes. you said there were some songs that needed to be retired. Well, yeah, I haven't gotten around to my list yet. But yeah, like I said, I, that I, would take forever. Yeah, and luckily on our drive to Bakersfield yesterday, there was plenty that came on <laughs> serious. So what, what, what would be the worst offender, you think? I'm pretty sure Back in Black by ACDC. Yeah, as, you know, bad. once they're using those in Chevy commercials, I think it's time to stop. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of ACDC, even Bon Scott stuff included going Please. way back. Yeah. And and Guns N' Roses, you know, their entire to the jungle, their entire Paradise discography, City, I think, needs to be retired. <laughs> knocking on Heaven's Door, Sweet Child of Mine. I'm pretty sure I would not be into music if not for that song. So I, I hesitate <laughs> with that one. But, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of Nirvana. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> smells like Teen Spirit, Lithium, th- and Come as You Are. Again, another song that got me into music that I hesitate with, but I'm just like, no. No, it just it just needs. To this go. is a never-ending battle. And it, 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 one day, one one day, we'll show you terrible and, bands. Yeah, what's and, up? W- there's plenty of other music out there. At <laughs> least it doesn't need to be the same four songs. <laughs> Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome back to the skinny. You finally, you know, you 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 you're back with us. The screaming drones. <laughs> I know. Have whoa, returned. whoa, everyone, ladies, please. So many people. Ladies, please hold your <laughs> orgasms. Keep your bras on. Keep your bras on. We, wow, wow. I, I enjoy them. The the amazing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, again, thank you so much for coming back to episode two. That makes us one hundred percent. 100% accuracy for, you know, weekly posts. Two times more than what we thought we would. Two-time grand <laughs> champions, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but I lied about birth control, and this man's having my baby. <laughs> I'm talking about Adam. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. It's been a long week, I swear. It's like listening to the feedback from all one of our posts on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a pretty success. I mean, for that's still a hundred percent more people than what, yeah, exactly. Who liked, who you know, for 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 unknowns like us. I mean, we had a pretty good week since uh, since since our first episode debuted last week. We definitely did. I was happy with just the the little bit of feedback that we got. Oh yeah, we bunch bunch of positive feedback. People 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 said that uh, they liked our chemistry, and I you know I, 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 I would have to agree. Yeah, chemistry. Is important. Yeah, I didn't marry this man for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having his baby, apparently. <laughs> You're having my baby. And uh, so I'm your... That song needs to be retired right away. <laughs> right away, yes. There are certain Direct songs that video. need... <laughs> there are certain songs that just need to be played once and never again. Never again. That's <laughs> going for you, Jimmy Fallon. You should not have been covering that song acoustically <laughs> in your dressing room. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Carly Ray, whatever her name is. Well, we got a lot of news topics to cover this week, so we're so gonna much. we're gonna so go much. straight into the feed. All right, first news topic of the feed. This week. One hit wonder news. Speaking of Carly Rae Jepsen, yeah, <laughs> her 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 name doesn't show up into this list, but you know, since last week was the beginning of summer, uh, we came across an article that said. That, that you know that listed the ten worst one hit wonders of summer, and oddly enough, they referenced Carly Rae Jepsen. They did in the first paragraph of this article, saying like <laughs> this is the hit song of the summer. But apparently, her song wasn't shitty <sighs> enough to make this well, list. Too many thirteen-year-old girls are enjoying it. By the way, if you're listening to this and you're a parent of a tween, stop giving them money, <laughs> <laughs> please. The, when we talked about Warp Tour last week, there was a handful of. Tween age, yeah, tween age girls. Was that a word? Tween yeah, age. and the, <laughs> single-handedly they brought falling in reverse and you know yellow card. To I was just happy to not see them only at the Bieber show and only at this Jepsen chick show. Yeah, I mean the fact that they can listen to music that has guitars and drums and basses. Yeah, it, it's sometimes a, crappy lead singers, but <laughs> most of the time they're crappy lead singers. Most of the time. <laughs> so we're gonna quickly go over these uh, these. Songs of great shit. Now, the only problem is that, as Mike and I perused this list, was that we didn't know at least half of them. Yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna briefly go over them, and then uh, we're gonna you know let you guys. I mean, if you guys know them, that that's great. But the number ten, 
I'm just going to let this one kind of roll in. Oh, this is the one I have to go somewhere else for. Oh, dear. Well, the first one I, I think needs no introduction. I think this is uh, The Macarena by, what's the name of those guys? Los Del Rio? Los Del Rio. Here it uh, comes. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, uh. So this this particular video has a million, more than a million views on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. Not as many as Skrillex. But <laughs> <laughs> Another band that needs to be retired. <laughs> now the craziest thing about this is that it's two old guys surrounded by a bunch of like, you know. Very attractive young ladies. Very attractive. I'm and not trying to seduce you. I know Mike was just a child when this song came out, but I was kind of an adult. I yeah. was pretty close to adulthood, and it just it just wouldn't go away. Interesting, and, interesting story. My mom is a certified, certified <laughs> Macarena dancer. Certified. Yeah, she took a class and everything. The craziest thing was me being at the bowling alley at age 17, 18, and my two friends, Chris and Denny... I mean, they started doing it. Just the two of them. They were both also 17 and Just 18. Bursting out I, into song. I didn't huh? know it. I didn't know it. But so they... it's, like, it's like a Disney movie where people like burst oh out into God. dance for no reason. I, and I can't even... Okay, I'm just going to turn it off. Please do. It's giving me a headache. It drives me nuts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there, there's, there, there is that. 1997. My, I remember my haircut lady saying that Macarena meant virgin. And she didn't like that song because of that. It's just so far from the I truth. I didn't know that. You know, my wife. My wife is uh, is is you know of Spanish descent. I should probably ask her what that means. It doesn't mean virgin. Oh, okay. You know that, or else they'd be calling you know. It sounds like a nut. Uh, the one hey, who, macadamia. Who, who had Jesus, Mary? Um, uh, We'd be hearing that term macarena. Yeah. A lot more. <laughs> well, <laughs> number we go to Catholic service. <laughs> number nine on this list, we got the Dawn of Correction by the Smokesmen. Uh, this is from 1965, and we decided not to play this one for you because nobody's ever heard of it. So moving on. Yeah. Um, the the tele- next one, Mike and I had the unfortunate mistake of clicking on and, <laughs> and trying to figure out what the hell it was. This is The Telephone Man by Mary Wilson. Sh- should I click on it? Should we? Yeah, why not? I, 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 it's I'm, probably one of those scared. songs where people need to listen to it to get, to get I, it. I, I think so. Here it comes. Now, I the mean, interesting thing about... Because we're, we're, we're listening to this at the article, and it has YouTube clips. And the interesting thing about this YouTube clips is that it's a, it's showing random images of hotels <laughs> and people moving furniture. And, and then it cuts to, I guess, this woman. Woman? <laughs> I think so. She's talking on the phone, and it's definitely from the 80s. It's out of sync. It's one of those ones that you lift up and you dial on the bottom of the phone. It looks like a bedrock phone. It does. It does. It looks like a horn. I'll oh, see. There's an electrician on the, on the <laughs> screen right now. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> oh my God. Turn okay. it off, Adam. Turn gone. it off. It's gone. I'm sorry. Okay. The next one, 1997. This was again <laughs> another one of my favorite songs from 1997. This would be bitch. There was by the Meredith Macarena, Brooks. and then there was bitch. Bitch. Wait. Can we even say that word on TV? I, 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 we're not on TV. <laughs> but she got away with it on TV. <clears throat> Mike, what, what's your memories of the song? I know you were like 11. None so. whatsoever, but that woman is very attractive. She, she, we we had a big debate in high school about whether she was hot or not. Because this is like the Lilith Fair years yeah. where women were being kind of dirty, kind of hairy in the armpit. <laughs> hey, man, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Because there was her and... Uh, that was the one that did the Dawson's Creek song. Oh, I can't remember that. Whatever her name was. but Please comment below if you know who did the yeah. Dawson's Creek song. I, if I have Paula Cole. Okay. So, you know. And then uh, we all worried at that time that uh, angry music, angry female music. Th- there was a whole bunch of them in the late Alanis 90s. Alanis Morissette. Yeah. I think she started it. Yeah. That was the problem. Thanks a lot, Morissette. All right, Morissette. If you hear any of her stuff now, it's not worth listening to, so just moving on. What's number six, Adam? <laughs> um, now, I don't know anything about this band called The Afternoon Delights from 1981. I guess based on the song. Afternoon Delight. It's a song called General Hospital. <laughs> Which, again, Mike and I had never heard of this. Yeah. It's long before our time. Moving on. Moving on. This song, some of us have heard. Yeah, this, this, this song originated back during the whole the boy band and... The boy band. Pop star. Yes. This was like rival to Jessica Simpson yeah. in 2001. One of those... Because those... she rivaled Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. This was like the fourth rate. Yeah. She was, yeah, she was like, you know, D-list pop star. D-list, yeah. I would Willa say. Ford. Willa Ford. 
Still somebody that I didn't even remember her name. Yeah, but she has no career anymore. I think she works at a Walmart. Why is this song just a summer song? Because it can only be worth three months of listening to. <laughs> and then you're really? going to turn it off. Yeah, nobody's ever listened to it since the summer of 2001. So, moving Probably. on. Probably. She didn't get a reality show like Jessica Simpson. Yeah, she might be. She <laughs> might be on Celebrity Rehab someday. Um, the next one, "On My Own" by Patty, Patty Labelle and Michael McDonald. And Michael McDonald. Now, those of you who know of the film Forty Year Old Virgin" know that Michael McDonald got really famous from that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> because of his "Ain't No Mountain High Enough" yeah. song. <laughs> this song, on the other hand, I've never heard of, but it's saying it wasn't just a power ballad in the '80s. It was just plain ballads too. Every song in the '80s was ballady. This one earns the distinction of being written and produced by two significant songwriters, Burt Baccarat from Austin Powers fame mm-hmm. and Carol Bayer Sanger. Sager. <laughs> sorry, 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 baby boomers for messing up the name. Uh, who should have known better. <laughs> to add further insult to injury, it was the biggest hit for both Patti LaBelle and, and Michael McDonald. And that's not saying that's not saying much. Now, granted, I don't know any other Patti LaBelle or Michael McDonald songs. No, I guess we're out of touch. Was Michael way. McDonald in... I think he was in that band Chicago, but I, I'm not positive. And again, Baby Boomers, I'm sorry. Comment below. They're not listening. I know this song <laughs> from when you go to get your hair cut. Oh, yeah. Every salon is <laughs> mandatory. The place is song. <laughs> Number three. Number three is Mike's favorite song. It's my favorite worst song of, of all time, and I'm surprised... This is at number one. This song needs no introduction, and I think you should stop it right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, where were you in 2000 when that song hit the airwaves? Because I know where I was. I was in middle school. Middle school. Yeah. Um, now, were you in the crowd that enjoyed that song? Because were, were you living in Guam at the time? Fuck. <laughs> no. Were you in Guam at the I time? I lived though? in Guam at the time. Because that, that has a, a definite g- island yes, feel that, to it. So. That, was, that song was everywhere. You go to the, men from Guam You well. go to the grocery store. That song is on. You go to the <laughs> bank. That song is on. You go to your school. People will be blasting that song. And it, that's, one of those, that's one of those songs that are so bad that, you know, every, you know, different click of, you know, different, you know, of schools, you know, we got the jocks and, you know, the hip-hop guys and, and the, the rock stars and the cheerleaders. And they would the all heads. be playing that song. It's a universal song, and it fucking sucks. sucks. Okay, my uh, please go on because I have a little bit of a very sad story. No, because it. I'm not gonna go on because it's gonna be angry. <laughs> you please go on. Because for me, it represents how far I've come in my life. Because in 2000, um, I was working for a telemarketing agency mm-hmm. <laughs> for a very terrible three months, and they would listen to 99.1. Um, all the time. They play this song because every 15 minutes, I'm sure. The, every 15 minutes. And I would only work four-hour shifts. But I would hear this song at least eight times in a four-hour oh, shift. Oh, man. And it was 2000, you know, it was the, the year of that song. And and we would sing it, and it was lame. And and it just reminds me why I stayed in school and got a master's degree. This is definitely <laughs> one of those songs that are, you know, of the remnants of the 90s. And, and my team for the telemarketing agency, we were called Team 10. I don't know why there was no numerical order to it, but my <laughs> manager, when he would try to motivate us to like sell more and get more whatever, I don't like where this is going. Timeshare, he would just say, "Who let Team Ten out?" Ooh, ooh, and then we would all do that. <laughs> it was so terrible. <laughs> that, uh, I, I would quit that job after the first. I'm time sorry, that if you're between the ages of 18 and 22, you're gonna be stuck with shitty jobs. Yeah, it's just it's just the way of life. <laughs> Well, stay in school, kids. Thank goodness this school. list is almost over. Oh, my uh, God. But this one... Number two. This one we'll, we'll talk about briefly. Yeah, Almost Paradise by... I think you're going to have to click the YouTube link right there in the middle. Thank you. Clicking. clicking. Yeah, Almost Paradise by Mike, Mike Leno and Ann and Wilson. Wilson. Hey, is that Kevin Bacon? That was, because this is from the movie Footloose. Oh, nice. Starring Kevin Bacon. <laughs> starring... start dancing his feelings. Starring himself. Adam. <laughs> I think one of the first things I said to Adam when I first met him was like, hey, you look a lot like Kevin Bacon. No fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. We'll, we'll talk more about Kevin Bacon later. You did not say that, did you? I did say that. Really? Because that, that lady in HR at Patton yeah. said I look like Kevin Bacon too. <laughs> Especially with your short hair now. I think Kevin Bacon is one ugly mother trucker. So No, nah, he's not ugly, dude. Now, current Kevin Bacon or... Kevin Bacon... Period. Or 1987 Kevin Bacon. Well, I do love that mullet. Well, 
Now, in uh, at least he's gone on to yeah. well, make some hot chicks, I guess. So. And in the X-Men movie, too. How long are we going to give this song to, to, uh, to I think to it's time to in. stop. People know this song. <laughs> so the moral of the story is that Adam looks like Kevin Bacon. I'm going to sing it real quick. Almost Paradise, We're Living on Heaven's Door. Yay. Know, something like that. And our number one worst oh one-hit wonder of summer. Oh, my God. We just need to get this over with. I'm not going to say anything about this song. I think we're going to let this shitty song st- speak for itself. I don't know what's going on in this video. Ooh, it's this is by... Ooh, there's a lead-up. There's a lead-up. You all know This is prior to... This was during Gangsta Rap. Yes. It was 1994-ish. Yeah! Ah. But post Flavor Flav. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm getting scared. All these gangsters. <laughs> And my man Steve Roland. <laughs> Please take my wallet. Oh. Uh, now sing it if you know the words. No. Well, moving on. Party over there. Well, that was the 10 worst songs. Uh, there, there's definitely worse songs out there, but we whoop, just. There it is. Whoop, there it is. For those of you who didn't know, I'm going to just. Yeah, I'm going to kill it. Uh, yeah. So moving on moving in the on. feed. Our next topic in the feed <clears throat> uh, if you guys are hungry in more ways than one, there might be some you know options. Coming up for you, Adam. What am I talking about? Boobs. Boobs. <laughs> and lots and lots of scantily clad boobs. Well, like, according to a, a, an article we came across, apparently there's a, a big boom in you know booby restaurants. And I'm talking about, of course, like Hooters style, where women, your 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 primary, your primary. And not just Hooters. That's the weird thing. Yeah, it's not just Hooters. There's there's new other restaurants. There's two other roost restaurants making a boom in. The American restaurant. Business. Now, those of you out there who have gone to restaurants like these, I haven't. I mean, I really, really haven't. For a guy who enjoys boobs as much as the next, and I just, I don't go to these. Yeah, the I two, think it's because I'm married. Yeah, the, the, be, the two new restaurants we're referring to. If you ever run into them, uh, one of them is called Twin Peaks, and the Where other the hell is this one, by the way. Uh, Twin Peaks. I to look it up. Is I don't know the article. Doesn't... It's in New York. Okay, Let's just go Twin with New Peaks York. in New York. So you're obviously not going there. Cause... Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if we these... have very limited broadcasting range. If these if these types of restaurants, clearly known as restaurants, restaurants. Yeah. Who came up with that? I hope that they patented. That I think term. a I think an eight year old came up with that. <laughs> oh. Restaurants man, and also the, t- the what was the other ones called the the, the, the tilted, tilted kilt the tilted kilt pub and eatery. This, the first that one's in Tempe, Arizona, so that Uh-oh, one's a little bit closer. A little bit closer here to, to SoCal. But, of course, we have <laughs> now, the Hooters restaurants. So you got all over. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, those started up in the, apparently the 80s, I guess. I think so, yeah. And if you, walk, if you ever walk by a Hooters, I mean, the last one I did was, like, in San Diego many years back. And I just, like, even looking at the girls, they look so plastic. Yes. I think it's like, I don't even want to go in there. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this article interviewed the, the owners of these two restaurants, and they, and they made it very clear. This that is their business model. Yeah, they made it clear. That that's their business model. You have to fit into the, you have to fit into the uniform to work there. You know, Hooters got in trouble a couple times for, you know, having you know beautiful women there, but they just didn't fit into let's say like a medium or a large. So they would promptly get fired, and that would start a whole you know sexual harassment slash, uh, you know, e- equality, job yes, market thing, equal rights e- amendment, equal thing. rights thing. And, and yeah. yeah. So, the, I mean this. I don't know if this is completely legal, but I'm sure it is. Private owner, but whatever. Yeah. So well, you know they're marketing to. They know who they're marketing to, and they're they're apparently marketing to the corporate crowd. And you said and which, you said you've never been to a Hooters restaurant, right? I have not. Any reason why? But um, there's none. Wait, there are some in this area. There's one. Yeah, there's one actually on my way. It's to just like home. you know going to a strip club, in my opinion. Yeah, there's no. Point. It's like, granted, I the only time I've ever had their food was when we went to a freaking 66ers game and they were giving away wings. Okay, but there. you've never been inside a Hooters no, restaurant. No, and the wings weren't even that good. <laughs> I know other people might disagree with me. Yeah, Hooters <laughs> has a reputation of having pretty shitty food. I would assume and so. People just go there just to see, you know, just to have, just be flirted T with. T and by, A. Yeah, just be yes. flirted with by very attractive young ladies who are working their way through college, I'm sure. Always working their way through college. Yeah, I too have never been to a Hooters restaurant, nor do I ever had, nor have ever had a desire to. I mean, there's no point. Uh, and it's probably more expensive. I'm sure it Because is. of that. And, and then, know, you know, unfortunately, they give you the false hope that <laughs> yeah. they, they actually think that you're attractive, yeah, which makes you give them more money and tips. Oh, yeah. It's a weird thing when an attractive girl seems to take an interest in you. You just want to give her money. Please, <laughs> take all my money. Please. I don't know why, but you feel better. The food and the service was awful, but please, take my money. 
I mean, it's just like going to a strip club. Yeah, but it's you know, the same thing the except same, they actually show nip. Yeah, the same people who go to strip clubs. I'm sure they love it's scooters. Awful. So you know, to each their own. We 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 wish these businesses the best of luck. If they're an industry that's booming in this terrible economy. The only bad thing is that it tells terrible things to young girls growing up that you need to look like this to make it work, to, to, to have a career, to have a, to have a job. To have a $10 an hour career, right? I mean, granted, I enjoy looking at them as much as the next guy. Which I, is, I really am conflicted You know, it's, as, it's weird. It's the, year, it's the year 2012, and, you know, apparently these types of restaurants are booming. Apparently there's no internet. You can't go to the internet. You can't buy food off the internet. Oh, well, I guess so. Well, why don't you, like, you know, order takeout and then go on the internet and look at hot women or hot men. It doesn't matter. That way you're being social. I mean, this is for the extroverted pervert. Oh, okay. Yeah, the extroverted <laughs> pervert. Yeah, the bro. Yes. I want that on my tombstone. The extroverted pervert. Oh. Here lies Adam Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we uh, okay. uh, in, in, in other news. I don't even want to read what their business model is because it's just it just hurts. Hot my chicks give you food and you give them lots of money in return. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty simple as that. Now the next topic of discussion, which ties right into this whole notion of body image, and body something. image. Yeah, appar- apparently a study has been conducted in the University of West My- Westminster that suggests that men who are focused on their own muscles. I you know you know bodybuilders and guys who go to the gym just to just to build muscle and stuff tend to be more sexist and hostile towards women. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but there is not a muscular British person <laughs> that ever existed um, in, chef, in humanity, right? Chef Robert Irvine. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> if I watch a lot of Food Network, I think that's the only oh, thing okay. I watch. So yeah, he's a very muscular British man. The only other guy I can think of is that ginger wrestler. Who looks really oh, yeah. weird when he's yeah. <laughs> all pale Seamus? and redheaded? I think he's Seamus. Seamus. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's Irish. But, <laughs> oh know. dear, but he's across the pond. He, he kind of is. So, do you think there's any validity to this statement? I I would have to answer with a qualified yes. Okay, well, but I'm going more from an American perspective than a British perspective. That's very true. Well, um, well, according to the study, a group of 327 heterosexual British men. Filled out questionnaires for the study. That's an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never, you know, met an unpolite British man, by the way. So uh, most people in the study were white. 35.5% were most. single. 31.2% were, date, were, were in a dating relationship. 23.9% were married. And the rest fit into the other category, whatever that means. Uh, married to a goat. Married to a goat. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, I think we all have experiences with, you know. And you got to remember, folks, you're talking to the guys who are definitely not the not the muscularist. We are pretty manly. I don't know who you're we talking about. We are manly. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you have more tattoos than I do. <laughs> that doesn't make me manly, though. <laughs> but muscular-wise, I mean, you and I are not hitting the gym. Yeah, well, 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 I think, you know, a lot of, I think it's generally accepted that people who hit the gym and try to pump iron and try to get themselves to that, you know, bodybuilding type stance. They probably have body images, right? And you know, body image, body image issues. Yeah, body body image issues. Ah, and you yes. know, people with body image issues tend to have a, a weird skewed view of, you know, uh, men and women. And they feel know. that women fit into a certain kind of yeah gender stereotype role and general. Yeah, so I, I guess there's some validity to this now that there's been a study. But you know, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go so far as saying oh all buff guys are sexist. Buff guys are. <laughs> Generally uh, tend to be sexist, I guess. I, I, w- I would, uh, I, w- I would have to differ with you on that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. If I see buff, I just think sexist. <laughs> it's just the way of the world. You stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> stereotype all buff guys. But then you see their girlfriends, and I really think this ties in a lot more with narcissism. Yeah, narcissism, narcissistic personality body disorder, yeah, where body where your girlfriend is a direct representation of who you are. Mm-hmm. So. You got it, and, it, and always that 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 type of woman do that very plasticky. The Hooters the ho- waitress. The Hooters waitress. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Where it's like their teeth are are so white that you don't even want to look at them. You can see into the future. You need to put your sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're... so you know, granted, you and I don't have a lot of friends that are super muscular buff guys. No. We. I don't a lot know of why our, that is. A lot, but... of, a lot of our friends are, you know. Fit and in shape, yeah. Uh, but, true, but true. No, no, I, don't I would like to consider us fit, fit and in shape. Oh, yeah. Just I'm, not muscular. Not muscular, no. I, don't, I do not have a desire to be muscular because I'm not sexist. Right. Zing! <laughs> and, you know, 
our wives don't work at Hooters. No, not at all. And we didn't have that as a prerequisite for who we chose to be married yes, to. Yes, because body image is not, you know, number one on our list. Right. right. It's number one on our uh, internet history. <laughs> but <laughs> Promise me when I die, Adam, that you will go to my computer and delete my internet history. I promise. Friends do that for friends. Tell me what your password is. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, next, next, uh, next story in the feed. Uh, there was... There was a, a new grocery store that opened in uh, Suderlugum, Germany. I'm pretty sure I Suderlugum. yeah, I'm pretty sure I uh, mispronounced that. But uh, they offered they offered to the first 100 shoppers who would show up naked of you know of op- first days of opening. First 100 shoppers to show up naked would be given a free shopping spree of about 270 Deutsche Marks, which equals to about uh, 340 dollars worth of food. And uh, what they didn't what expect... an odd number for them to choose. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> but uh, what they didn't expect is that 250 people showed up. Whoa. Yeah, really. 250 naked people. 250 naked Germans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's a lot of body hair. So if, if, <laughs> let, let, let's say there was a grocery store opening a block away from your house, Adam. Whole Foods store. Whole Foods store, okay. yeah. That would offer you $340 to shop naked. Would you do it? Man, that is, a, that is quite, quite a question. Because I don't like to show off my junk as much as some of our friends do. I do. And <laughs> <laughs> we have we have another friend who just loves showing his penis. Am I allowed to go there and just watch, or do I have to be naked? I'm pretty sure you can watch from the parking lot. <laughs> I was like from across the street with my binoculars <laughs> and your yes. trench in your trench coat. <laughs> yeah, get get that craft cheese. Well, I guess it just depends on if it's the Stater Brothers, maybe not. But <laughs> okay, yeah, just some regular Whole Foods that's you know privately owned. And um, I, 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 I don't alert, think I would. Spoiler alert: I definitely would. Okay, what 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 motivates you? It's something to, fun to do. I mean, you know, I mean, granted, three hundred and forty bucks. I don't think I've ever spent that much at a grocery. Very store. Very true. I mean, you so, can go to the alcohol aisle and you know fill up your fill up your alcohol supply. I could. That would take up most of it. Yeah, really. But then I would also need to, you know, pick up my cereal, and my oatmeal, <laughs> and Where's my kashi? My lunch meat. <laughs> some some oranges. So for you, know, you that's no. Bananas if you know what I mean. So for you for, so for Adam that's a no. <laughs> it's just for you go to the store. Oh, that's the other thing too. You go to the store, you're bound to run into an uh, attractive woman. And you know what happens to guys when they're around attractive women. Well, you know, just go hang out at the frozen meat section and, you know, <laughs> they'll take care of that, right? That doesn't help the ego. Remember, things shrink. <laughs> okay. Okay, so for Adam, that's a no. Mike, I'm leaning towards the yes. And uh, you, the listener, if you were given $340 of free groceries, would you shop naked at a new grocery store? Please comment below. Let us know. Can barely walk outside without a shirt on, <laughs> let alone without pants. You know, on. it's a weird thing about shirts. You know, it's, I used to not take off my shirt because I had a farmer's tan, but I but I had a farmer's tan because I never took off my shirt. It's a vicious, so you have that awkward, that you know, three day period yeah. between when the farmer's tan eventually becomes a real tan. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I just choose to leave a shirt on. <laughs> All right. So we got actually a trifecta of news coming up now. Uh, Holy this is, cow! This is a lot less lighthearted. Um. This will be kind of our, our gay news segment. Yeah, this is our gay news segment. But I think we, we was very that, that, that's a copyrighted thing from Infomania. Okay, so this is our so. homosexual news segment. Homosexual news. Yeah, we, Inland was, Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a, we had a string First of uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know gay rights related news in the past week. Uh, the first one: if you if you are in the Riverside area and you shop at Lowe's. you should probably <laughs> not shop there anymore because because you know they they got some. <laughs> They got some hateful bigots working do, there. Do, do you want to tell the story? Because I read the article too, and okay, yeah. Well, um, there were two men who happened to be homosexual. They were returning their leaf blower, I believe. It just didn't work. So, I promised to not make a joke about that. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many things that you could go from there. But anyway, so they went to anyway, go um, return their leaf blower, and uh, one of the employees are just. I, I don't know what he said for sure. I was, we're, we're going to the follow the follow up article, but uh, he just. Went on on this very verbal, very hateful. Apparently, they were trying to return it without a receipt. Okay, but still, I mean, th- does that warrant him calling him a slur? It generally doesn't. Generally, <laughs> generally, yeah. Okay, no, it, it for sure does not. <laughs> but as you read on a little bit more about like the criminal history of these guys, yeah. Well, which, he had. I think the crim- the quote unquote criminal history is that he had like unpaid wedding bills. There was a little bit of that. Yeah. And also, I, 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 I don't know who got 
pissy first. That's the one thing the article from the from I, the I mean, victim's point of view. It was it, it, an employee it, that just started with the slurring, right? And the, and and the I cursing. don't know how often that happens. Like I I, I agree and that complete, and, a, and to a, be fair, Lowell sent out a, a, a statement apologizing for the situation and that they you know they they basically saying they should know better than to yes you, know, have you their, should not use a gay slur yeah for sure but the, to be fair, I'm pretty sure this isn't Lowell's Lowe's fault. It's not Lowe's fault. Isolated, it's the douchebag behind the return. Yeah, this is an counter. isolated incident. Who is behind? Now, the granted, return. I did go to Home Depot's return counter on Friday. Did they call you? And a that slur? was a pretty terrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was going on on Friday, but that line was long as hell. And then you know, it just took forever. And so you know, maybe that was the experience these people went through. And then That's still if no they didn't excuse. have a receipt, yeah. they might. Somebody's gonna get bitchy. Yeah. Whether it's the person that works well, there, well, he also whether threatened to go to the guy's home and beat him up. There isn't that. There, uh, sorry, there is that as well. You don't. You don't say. I have your address in my computer. I can go kick your ass. Oh, well, anyway, that, the, that the, uh, the, the the two gentlemen uh, who were verbally abused by this guy, they they were granted a restraining order by the by the. But you, you got to remember, I bought my grill from that Lowe's. Oh God! Even my parents bought their grill from that Lowe's. Oh God. My parents were not discriminated against. Okay, I hope not. <laughs> they weren't trying to. <laughs> At re- least they didn't tell they me they were. They weren't trying to return the girl. Mom, Mickey, comment below <laughs> if you were discriminated. Oh dear. <laughs> I hope you weren't. <laughs> oh well, in other horrible homosexual news today, if you're if you're living, I don't near, like the. We, the, that can't be the title of this segment. No, it's horrible <laughs> homosexual news. <laughs> don't worry, we've got. Don't worry, it's not. It's not all bad, I guess. There's a lot of happy gay news this week because it was. It was. It was Gay Pride. Gay yeah, Pride yeah, Day, San Francisco. Week. June yeah, we're gonna we're gonna right? we're gonna get we're gonna get to that shortly. But uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, a young lesbian couple, <laughs> age eighteen and nineteen, I believe, uh, were found shot. One of them is, one of them died from their one of them died from their injuries. One of them is recovering Ridiculous. at at the uh, Corpus Christi hospital at the moment. Uh, no suspects right now. Uh, nobody's been found. I didn't see any follow up to this. I I I feel like we shouldn't make a. Anything funny about this? Oh no! Yes, this is super serious. And <laughs> yeah, it, it's, other than Texas, I, st- I just find reasons to hate them every day of my life. Yeah, well, it's not. Well, to be fair, it's not Texas's fault. It's just some asshole bigot's fault. Well, yeah, but that doesn't really help. That doesn't. That revenge. doesn't. That doesn't help the the Texas stereotype, I believe. Yeah, I, I agree. And these were young, yeah, kids too, straight like out of 18, high school too. Yeah, nineteen something like that. Yeah, and they were they. Were, your friends were interviewed. That they said that nobody's ever given them any gruff for their relationship status, and it just it just seemed to come out of nowhere. Some stupid senseless Texas. crime. Yeah, stupid Texas, or as my wife calls it, Southeast Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! So if she didn't want to be in Texas when we were driving through. Unfortunately, we seem to have you know as a species, we seem to be far from true equality. I guess it's it's it is pretty sad. And uh, speaking of equality. Um, are we moving on yeah. because this is too depressing it's of a story? Very depressing. <laughs> well, this is this is still sort of depressing, but the Oreo on June, the Oreo cookie. You know, do do you like Oreos, Adam? I love Oreos, I like but I haven't eaten one in several years. They're kind of expensive, I, I, and they're fifty calories per cookie. Oh God! So getting back to my body image issues, <laughs> <laughs> you should hit the you should hit the gym, you sexist. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, on June on June twenty fifth, those of you who like. Facebook on uh, like Oreo Oreo cookies on Facebook were treated to an image that just that had an Oreo cookie with uh, six layers, which got to be like what like three hundred calories. Uh, yeah, uh, that's like, that's, that's triple the calories of a regular <laughs> with Oreo. With the uh, that, uh, si- a six layer cookie, each with a you know color of the rainbow flag, right underneath it, it just says Pride. I think it's awesome. It's an awesome picture, and it you know it shows that they're it shows that Nabisco and Kraft and their their mother company are you know totally for gay rights. But you know who's not for gay rights? Bigots. Bigots. Texas. Bigots and fundies. <laughs> well, uh, underneath the Facebook uh, underneath the Facebook posts, they, if if you were happy, if you happen to be reading some of the comments, you you could have been treated to you know such gems as. Homosexuality is an abomination! Exclamation point times six, written by Dakota. <laughs> Jason, fuck you, Dakota. <laughs> Jason, Dakota Fanning. I know it's you, <laughs> bitch. Jason says this is a very disturbing situation. There's nothing worse than a fag it spelled with an I. 
<laughs> spelled with an I. A faggot cookie. Wait, what did spell check pick that? <laughs> I don't think I don't think fundies have time for spell check. <laughs> That's because he spelled it with an O first, and it, it probably came up with the red yeah, line uh, underneath it. Time to unlike this world full of full of bunch of uh, queers. Okay. Full of a bunch of queers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> George wrote, For those who think God created gays, read your Bible! Man shall not <laughs> lay with a man as he would a woman, and vice versa. Or you will go to hell! Is vice versa in the Bible? I, I, or in the Bible? I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what God said? But, but, then, but then he tries to turn it around. He goes, oh, but sorry. to each his own. What? <laughs> I know where I'm going when I pass. The bright side is, you won't get AIDS from a cookie. Oh, that is so fucking crazy. And my favorite comment is from a, a young gentleman named Mason, and which he, he simply stated, <laughs> fag. Last name, Dixon Line. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, you know what? What the fuck? Why don't people, like, if they're going to quote the Bible, can't they use the exact quote rather than put... And vice versa. Or vice versa. <laughs> you know, See, there's, there's so many things we could be saying or about we'll this. we'll go to like, hell. Did God, God put it in all caps like that with three exclamation <laughs> sure points? <laughs> that would really, yeah, make it pretty cut and dry, I guess. You know but what? I, as, as you saw, as you may have heard from last week, you probably know where Adam and I stand on this. Is it, This is really more hilarious than it is, you know, upsetting. Because they're just making themselves look bad by doing stupid shit like this. I agree. Yeah, but and I, I also, you know, so, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of weird comments like that. Oh, we're just not going to buy Oreos anymore. We're going to boycott that is so Oreos. Stupid. You should not buy Oreos because they're 50 calories a cookie. <laughs> that, if they make you fat. Yeah, if you're not going to buy Oreos, <laughs> that's Diabetes is a di- it's an epidemic. <laughs> well, I've got a suggestion to those, you know, funny assholes who want to boycott, you know, Oreo because they support gay rights. I've got a list here, a very, very small list, really. It's uh, of of other companies that you should boycott because they support the exact same thing that Oreo does. I'm listening. How about uh, Amazon.com? Don't order from there anymore. The I can't. They, I have a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> the Miller, the Miller Brewing Company. Ooh. Ooh. I don't. Co- well. Coca Cola. I drink Pepsi. Okay. Pepsi on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you drive, if you drive a Ford, you shouldn't be driving that anymore. They support gay <laughs> I don't rights. Don't buy American. <laughs> if you if you have a baby, don't buy from Gerber. They support gay rights. If you bank at Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo, well, you might as well you might as well go use credit credit union or something. Wait, Chase? Chase also. My money goes to support homophobia. Ah, no. My, this is this is the this is the list oh. of companies that support gay rights. Sorry, sorry, I got it confused for a second. Okay, yeah, all these companies I'm, I'm naming, you you okay. should be the fundies should be boycotting these as well. It was a a, a ironic twist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's don't don't eat at McDonald's anymore well. because you know they support gay rights. Again, another d- diabetes epidemic. Yeah. Also, R- Pepsi. Why. Also, Pepsi. Ah. Starbucks <laughs> supports gay rights. If you wear Nikes, Starbucks. if you wear any Nike, you got to get, get rid of all that. If you wear Levi's, got to get rid of all it, those. Does it count that I, I only wear my Nikes to you know step in mud and you know mow my lawn? I don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> also, Target. Only you. <laughs> Target. Yeah, also Target. Hey, Target. The Walt Disney Company supports gay rights. Well, yeah, don't watch the Disney movies, I guess, anymore, right? Macy supports gay rights. J.C. Penney supports gay rights. I thought Disney didn't support Jews either. I think that's Walt Disney. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> also, you know, you know, you know that Microsoft or Apple computer that you're using to post all these gay, anti-gay slurs and stuff. Ooh, Ooh, that iPhone of yours. Yeah, iPhone and iPad that you're using to post anti-gay shit all the time and quote and misquote your Bible. They support gay rights. <laughs> Also, Facebook ironically supports gay rights too. So all you get the fuck off of Facebook. And I also want to introduce you guys to a man named Alan Turning. Alan Turning was an English mathematician and a computer scientist. He was credited with cracking the German Enigma code back in World War II, right? Uh, he and he is known as the you know the father of the father of modern computing. So oh, and I also forgot to mention this: he happened to be gay. What? Yeah. So please. Does he support gay rights too? So, I know. <laughs> so please, if you're gonna boycott, if you're gonna boycott Oreo or any of these companies that I that I uh, mentioned, why don't you please boycott any and all technology as well? This stupid country. Uh, we we'll find a reason to boycott almost anything. Oh, uh, really? But because they put a freaking picture of a rainbow Oreo. <laughs> <sighs> well, really? To, yeah. Whatever. So mis- mis- misguided hatred. But you know. Being gay is not a choice. You know what is being a choice? Being being religious is a choice. Being gay was never a choice for anybody who has ever lived in the history of ever. So, please, knock it off. 
Diabetes. Is Diabetes not is not a choice either. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're gonna, if you're gonna boycott Oreo or Miller or Coca Cola or Pepsi. It, it probably because you're going to get diabetes from it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that would be the only reason. That would be the only reason. When your doctor says give it a rest, <laughs> you should give it a rest. Any final thoughts anyway. on the feed? On the feed, yeah. Um, just happy Pride Week. Happy Pride. To all yeah, of our last wonderful week. Gay and lesbian friends. Yes, right. Our brothers and sisters in the in the in the LBGT community. Happy Pride Week last week. The ones I know of and the ones I don't know of yet who are yet to come out. Oh yeah, you know, em- embrace your individuality. Embrace embrace who you are. Don't let ignorant bigots put you down, because you know we're 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 right there with you. You got more supporters than right there. You got more you got more supporters than you think you do. Internalized homophobia is is not a good thing. Exactly. Being in in my job of things that I don't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's it's not cool. All right. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, I know yourself. we had a lot of I know we had a lot of topics to go through this week. But, uh, we're gonna go right into you on the plate this week. <laughs> Leave that for the transition. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today on the plate, we uh, uh, last week, in addition to being Pride Week, it was also the uh, three-year anniversary of Michael. I hope that's not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. I don't. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't know if if w- what exact day Michael Jackson died. I forgot exactly. Um, if but it was uh, the 25th or 20th. Yeah, last something. week was the uh, three-year anniversary of the passing of Michael Jackson, the King of Pop. The king of pop. Um, now, we talked a little bit about Paul McCartney last That's week, right. turning 70. He's still alive. How, yes, he is, surprisingly. <laughs> um, but with Michael Jackson, I think both Mike and I have just even less interest in him as a musician slash artist slash potential pedophile. Well, yeah, we'll, never, we'll get into that. We'll, never found guilty. We'll, but, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, I think when, it com- when compared to the Beatles, I think... Would, you, would would it be fair to say that uh, Michael Jackson made a bigger stamp in the music industry than the Beatles? I I, I would I I just don't know. You don't know I, because I've never been a fan so you per- of that so you, kind yeah, of music. So you personally, you, you, I mean, you'd probably rather listen to the Beatles than Michael Jackson, right? I think so. But you know, if I was a teenager in the '80s, I don't know if I'd be listening to Michael Jackson or not. I probably wouldn't because I'm really. I, I See when hate I to make it a racial thing. When but. I grew up, <laughs> this was in the early '90s too. Uh, it's just the type of music I don't listen to. Yeah, well, you know, his music, is, his music is great. Don't, don't mean, I mean, I have you know essential Michael Jackson albums and stuff. It's it's great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, I, I'm not one of those people that you know just only listen to a certain genre of music. I, I like to give everything a try. Michael Jackson songs, even when you know back in the Jackson Five, you know a lot of those songs are great too. So, look. Watch you back. Yeah, <laughs> that one's pretty cool. One, two, three, that song is retarded. <laughs> I can't stand that. Hey, song. what rhymes with ABC? One, two, three. You and me? No. Okay. <laughs> or one, two, three? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good when you're like a kindergartner. Yeah, I think that song was written for things. kindergartners. But the, you know, I grew up in the '90s, and back in the early '90s, I'm sure if you guys remember, but the that whole business with uh, the alleged pedophilia. Alleged pedophilia. Yeah, the, the the alleged sex scandal of Michael Jackson. That it was right after the Dangerous album came mm-hmm. out. He was like once again the biggest star in the world. They showed that video after the Simpsons. Oh yeah, the black or white video, black or white, black and white, or white, whatever it was. Black or white. And the, afterwards, he you know destroyed the car. He turned into a and panther. grabbed his crotch and yeah and whatever dancing his feelings like Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. <laughs> um, <laughs> He turned into a panther, and I was—I I was like maybe eleven-ish at that time, and my parents were just like, "That was uncalled for." <laughs> so I mean, like I grew up in the '90s, so, so like my earliest memories of Michael Jackson—you know, just right when Dangerous came out and he was a big star—and that was really my first memories of him. Okay, too. so immediately after this, this whole the whole scandal broke out, and I think as a kid, you know, even to adulthood now, like my whole memory of Michael Jackson is now tainted because of that. And because, you know, because of my age. I think so, too. Which is a damn... And it wasn't just because of certain songs. Yeah, which, which is a damn shame, too. Do you remember the time <laughs> we fell in love? I mean, that was a song that would have made me not like Michael Jackson anyway. Yeah, a lot of his... Mu- so, uh, personally, a lot of his songs are like Hit and Miss. 
especially not especially the ones that aren't singles. And you got to remember when we were that age, we had no idea what child molestation was. Yeah, I had to I had to learn about that from it the news. It was very difficult because the and the news like they don't describe what it means. Well, they just they, say they, terms. they showed that uh, that interview that Michael Jackson gave after the police raided his house and they, they took pictures of my penis. <laughs> my penis. <laughs> it has glitter sparkles on it, I guess. Exactly. Perm cubes. <laughs> A little bit of glitter. Um, still, like I, it took me many years after that to mm-hmm. really figure out what the hell was going on and why this was a problem. Granted, I had never experienced anything like that in my life because I was lucky, <laughs> unlike some people out there. So it was probably a good thing I stayed innocent about it. But then when you just start talking about, like, okay, you had a relationship, he had a relationship with a kid. You're just like... I, I know adults who are nice to me and take me to like fast food restaurants. Yeah, well, and take me to that, the their, their zoo in the but zoo not in the, the backyard. Yeah, yeah, there was not a lot of zoos in <laughs> their houses. Well, here here's where I here I did grow up around gay men, but there were no zoos yeah, in well, the houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what isn't that a, isn't that like mandatory? They were beautiful houses. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but there were no zoos. <laughs> well, here's where I stand with it. Michael Jackson had a, always had a reputation of being a very strange man. Strange, and you know there is a lot of alleged, you know, you know, physical abuse in you know growing up. Alleged, I, I believe. You know, I don't think any of that's ever been proven. Oh, I think it was proven. Okay, <laughs> but the, if you if you look at the way the, they they're even acting now, like when the yeah, Jackson still Four were on Jimmy Fallon this week, they are the most reserved people. Timid, like you, timid, you almost too. think that they're they're on. Some they're on some sort of anti anxiety medication. The same medicine that Michael Jackson was on, probably. Probably, <laughs> probably. But it's just like what a, was it called again? Yeah. Pro, 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 that's right. Yeah, but these guys are like they're they're they're, they're probably more of the Xanax crowd. Well, yeah. So like I was saying, he was just a very strange guy who had his childhood, you know, taken away from him at a very low, very young age. He just had, I think, he started working was, at what age it was, five. It was rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal. Even they talked about that and on yeah, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, and after, after Michael Jackson's death, somebody interviewed uh, his two bodyguards. And uh, I remember, I, I remember they, they were telling the story, and it was, very, it was a very you know, sad story. Uh, they were in Las Vegas. He was in his limousine. You know, the, they, were, they were in the back of the limousine with Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson looked outside the window and saw a, a lady of the evening just standing on the street. And a prostitute. A prostitute on her way to her job. No, at she was just <laughs> she was just standing there on the street, just waiting for someone to pick her up. But uh, Michael Jackson looked. And it was maybe like one or two in the morning, right? And so Michael Jackson looked out the window. And was like, "It's like, hey, what is she doing out there? She's going to catch a cold. She needs to go. She needs to, you know, go uh, to the hotel or something." And then you know the, the two bodyguards are looking at each other like, "Uh, sir, she's working right now." It's like. Michael Jackson goes, you know, working. What, what what could she be working at this kind of hour? And they had to explain to Michael Jackson, like at this point, like a forty something year old man, what a prostitute was. And he was forty something at that point. He said it was, wasn't he said like it was his, a very early. He said it was a know, very recent time. A re- very recent time that that that's happened. That's weird. So he was a very reserved man. So I never personally. I don't like that story at all. Yeah, it's a very sad story. But yeah. But then again, not knowing what a prostitute is, even like, into adulthood. I mean, yeah. That that that's something late adulthood. That that's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> knowing that kind of stuff, and I never believed he was a pedophile in any way. I just think I'm gonna go with homosexual. He might maybe maybe bisexual. I don't know. He was, he was he's a closeted home. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter what his sexual preference is at all. Yes. But the knowing all that stuff, it's it's. It's understandable that he have he'd, he'd have these you know special relationships with these young kids because you know he would just because he thinks yeah. he is a kid in a way. But you also got to remember he doesn't really he's not Go he's ahead. not aware of boundaries as a way you know boundaries yeah. I mean, exactly as, as strange as he is I don't think he's aware of those kind of personal boundaries that adults should have with kids. But if it crossed into that sexual realm, I don't know. I mean, we can yeah, only no. Imagine, the only people but, who know that were Michael Jackson and the the kids that it may or may not have happened to. So, you know, maybe... But he had all the telltale signs of a pedophile. Well, he's also a studied. very, very, you know, disturbed individual as well. Yeah. And he's very reserved, and, you know, I don't think he was aware of the real world. He, he lived in his own world, dude. Yeah, and when you have that kind of money. 
You can do. Oh no, yeah, you, you can. You can. You know. You can, you can genetically uh, engineer children. You can turn <laughs> yourself into a white <laughs> woman as well. <laughs> he tried. He really did. But you know, prescription drugs will kill you. Yeah, they really will. And, and, and then all that stuff happened. And you, did, you, did you listen to those leaked videos during the the Conray Murray? No, I didn't. No, uh, of the stuff, but he was like, he was so high on his medicine. He, I think he was calling uh, Lisa Marie, Lisa Marie Presley, and uh, like he was just rambling, rambling on, and like how he's so tired, he hasn't slept in days, and and like hey, call me back. And it, was, it was a very depressing story. So that whole this whole Michael Jackson tale is it, it's very sad, and it, it it just goes to show you. It's kind of like we knew it would happen at some point. Yeah, I mean, his death didn't really surprise me at, as much as it did, you know, the most of the world. Because the world was shaken. Yes. When Where were you at the time? I was at work. I was at work too. Yeah, I was at work. <laughs> How about that? And somebody just happened to pass by, uh, just pass by, just pass by my door, and just like, oh, by the way, Michael Jackson's dead. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure that was a joke. File this. <laughs> File this. <laughs> so I mean, are you done grieving yet? <laughs> I, I think the whole Michael Jackson story just goes to show what a cruel mistress the enter- the entertainment industry is. Yeah. I think so. It was kind of like with uh, with uh, Princess Diana dying. Mm-hmm. I know you were a little bit younger at the time. I, I do remember. But it was like this whole saga being played out in the freaking tabloid papers. And then just all of us, it was like you were watching a story. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was it, over. Now it's over, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, wait, um, I, as Eddie Izzard, one of my favorite mm-hmm. comedians, put it, he said, hey, I was watching that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. That was the way that he put it. So it was kind of the same way with... And, it, with, and his death did come, you know, kind of come out of nowhere because he was planning his comeback tour. Comeback yes. World tour, and then it, and then it released the footage. He was going to do like 50 shows in 50 oh, yeah. days or something crazy like that. And it was probably something he was, was used to. It was a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. So, granted, I hope that our favorite rock stars never die anytime soon. I hope soon. none of our favorite rock stars are, um, you know, addicted to propofol. Me too. You know, Me too. And or pedophiles, potentially. Yeah, and, and, you know, I hope the Jackson family are in a good place right now, too. Well, the Jackson 4 are going on tour. They are. They were on freaking Jimmy Fallon, just like, yes, yes, we're, we're going to go on tour hey. again. It's, it's going to be... Twiddling their the, fingers. <laughs> it's going to be around the world. <laughs> just say no. Yeah. So, you know, Jermaine still looks like he's made of plastic. Yeah. But the other ones look all right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the, Jack- the Jacksons are a very strange family. You think your family is strange? No. No. Go, go, go live with the Jacksons, I guess. How many kids are there total? I have oh, no dude, idea. I have no, t- I have no like clue. Eight, 10, 12. I never one. counted. I never bought it's, it. And Joe Jackson is still alive. He's probably still making babies. Prob- <laughs> who knows? Yeah. But you know, and, I, and, I, I, and I hope Michael Jackson's kids are in a good place, too, you know. They seem to be. They're on Yahoo being interviewed all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> so they'll have their own careers or at least their own YouTube channels. Maybe, maybe they're, they're very well taken maybe, care of. Maybe if they're listening to this, we can interview them. We would love to interview them. Hey, Jackson. But they've been interviewed so many times. I think they're sick can, of talking about themselves. We don't themselves. have to talk about them. We can, we can talk about... <laughs> it depends on how narcissistic they are. Okay. We can talk about, you know, it, what they think about, you know, buff people being sexist and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Hooters restaurants making a boom. <laughs> All right, how far along are we? Enough. Enough. So, any last thoughts on the Mike, on Michael Jackson's uh, anniversary? Mm, I did not celebrate it by listening to any Michael Jackson. <laughs> nor nor so. did nor did I. So, I mean, this, this is coming from a guy who's never been a big Michael Jackson fan. Yeah, but I like Smooth Criminal. I like Dirty Diana. But you understand his his mark in the music industry. I right? I do understand his mark. Yeah, I think his his influence is gonna. Uh, people, hopefully, people will remember him for his music. And not for his scandal, because you know I think there was some shady stuff going around there. People trying to blackmail him, and probably. It, it, I've never, I've never, I've, I've never known Michael Jackson personally, so I it's just speculation, of course. But it, it, it did seem like there was some dirty dealings going on. Probably just trying. To, no wonder just, he couldn't sleep. Yeah, just people just trying to exploit the poor guy just because he's weird. So leave, leave weird people alone, people. Leave Michael alone. Leave Michael alone. <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> oh, that's a dated reference. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and I'm glad to say that I knew of Smooth Criminal before the Alien Ant Farm version. Yes. <laughs> Screw you, Alien Ant Farm. From Riverside, California. <laughs> Are they from Riverside? Yeah. Oh, crap. You didn't know that they were I did not like, know that. the biggest thing? They're the biggest band to ever come out of Riverside. I didn't live in Riverside at the time when that uh, well, song came out. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, when they went on, they performed at the MTV uh, VMAs that year, and they were... In the Press Enterprise and everything? <laughs> well, no, not in the Press Enterprise, okay. as far as I know. We but right the when they came Enterprise. out, they were saying, like, like, 
what's up, Riverside, Marino Valley, Fontana? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Corona. Like, they did a shout-out to the Inland Empire. And that is so cool. I was like, woohoo! And then, But they've never been in the press enterprise. I'm sure they have oh. been. I Damn it, I was, trying to, I, was trying to, I was trying to one-up them, because you and I have been in the press enterprise. That's for true. For our music. Because we promote gay pride. That's right. We were we were, we played the, uh, the 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 Pride Festival three years Alien ago. Alien Farm never played the Pride Festival. Oh, before. suck it, Alien Ant Farm! <laughs> what? They played the VMAs. What's that? <laughs> the most anti-gay friendly, whatever. Yeah, they're, 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 M- I don't think MTV is on my. Well, I'm sure they are, but whatever. <laughs> they're not on my list. <laughs> they're on our shit list every day. <laughs> So anyway, guys, if you have uh, uh, if, if you guys had any que- questions or comments about the the anniversary of Michael Jackson's death, you know, just let us know what it meant to you. If, if you're a Michael Jackson fan, if you know, if you have any speculation on his on his personal life or if, you know his public his public life too. Because you got to remember, Mike and I we weren't paying attention that much. Not really. And as yeah, we we didn't pay attention at all. Even when his trial came and went. Then they found him yeah, and back in like oh five or whenever it was. Yeah. I remember like watching that and just being like, "Yay, hooray!" <laughs> like, yeah. Is that a good, good for thing him. or a bad thing? Like, but of course, Conrad Murray <laughs> is found uh, guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Right. Yeah, so he'll be four years in prison and he'll never be a doctor again. Oh yeah. No, he four years in prison. He'll probably spend like twenty eight days. Rich bastard. It's possible. Oh, the but... system works. <laughs> But he will lose his medical license. Oh, There's definitely. No way he can yeah. ever work again. Definitely. So. But then he'll write a book, and he'll have his own YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to interview him. Because you got to remember, the skinny the sk- has its own <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> the skinny will track him down and get the truth for you, the fans. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for sitting through the on the plate today. Uh, we're going to head right on to our sound off for this week. All right, this week in our sound offs, I think Adam is more prepared this week than he was last week. A little bit more prepared. So, Adam, uh, what are you going to sound off on this week? Well, <clears throat> stumbled across one of my again uh, ex favorite bands. Ex favorite bands. I have a feeling that this podcast will be devoted to me getting m- moving on with my with my musical career. Hopefully. So you know, I just stumbled across that Metallica played the entire Black album. From back to front, tracks one through twelve, in Atlantic City last Sunday, during the um, Orion Fest, right? The Orion Fest, which you know, Orion that song. I wish they would have played that instead because that is one of the greatest Metallica songs to ever be done, and it's all instrumental. And they have played it live yeah. a number of times over the past couple of years. I mean, and but anyway, the Black Album, you know. Those of you who are around my age probably were listening to it in the mid '90s. There was no internet sharing back then, so there was no internet sharing. We were listening to it on a tape that my friend, uh, you know, taped it from the CD onto the tape so we can listen to it. Hey, in the man! Car. Illegally <laughs> doing that on a cassette tape is going to destroy the music industry. It almost <laughs> did, single-handedly. <laughs> and I, that was the first time listening to it and listening to like. Unforgiven and Sad But True and just always like saying to myself oh Metallica's one of those bands that's way too heavy you know when I was 12 yeah and then I was like wait I really really like this and I got so into that album yeah back in the day when music choice was slim pickings Metallica was up in that top echelon and the Black Album was like the biggest album in the freaking world I'm pretty sure it's their biggest album it's sold 15. like 15.7 million copies it still holds the number one Spot in album sales since 1991, featuring five songs that ha- are still on the radio. And thank you, again, KCAL Rock. Those five need to be retired. Please, <laughs> KCAL Rock. I mean, come on. You have decades and decades worth of music. I think you can let go uh-huh. like 30 songs, please. And, and but then you also, I was reading. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck the Black Album, whatever. It's old. But then I was reminded of songs like My Friend of Misery, The God That Failed, which ties in with our podcast. Yeah. Uh, and Don't Tread on Me, which you know, KCAL will play that song. But like. So I've, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick of that one, but like those other songs are really good. And the only <laughs> like, I just started singing them over in my head. And the only reason why and they're really good is because they haven't been played to death on the I radio. I think so. I think so. And then you 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 know go back to you know the fact that the band almost broke up during that album, and it was such a, a, a crazy experience for them when you watch like the documentary of which I have the making. <laughs> that was before saying I know. <laughs> but just well, like all the drama now. that they went through and they were they weren't clean by by any But they're clean realm, now and like now they're going to write great music oh, y'all. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. But 
So I was initially angry at the fact they did that. And I think when bands play an album straight through, I, I just don't like that. Just because you know what's coming yeah, next. Really. When you go to a show, you want to be surprised by whatever song comes on. You're like, oh, I, I really hope they play this one song yeah. from that one album. If you're going and they're like, we're going to play the entire Black album, you're going to be like, fuck, why am I here? Okay, I'll go do some Like, I'll go home and listen yeah, to I'll it. I'll go do some homework while I'm here, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just not... I mean, Green Day did that during the American Idiot Tour. I'm just like, okay, it's a good album. I know Mike doesn't like it, but I still Green think the album's great. Green Day has a large handful of albums. They don't have to do a whole one. Exactly. It's like, at least the show that I went to, Green Day played a mixture of stuff. And I was like, oh, I remember that song from the Dookie album. <laughs> like, 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 I was 14 at the hey, time. Hey, remember the 90s? <laughs> I hope you have the time of your life. Um... So, you know, they, 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 they played the album backwards and forwards. How long until you think Metallica is going to hang up hang up the shred? Well, Lars has been saying that he can't do this for much longer, like seven years ago. He's too busy. So he, I really don't He's know. too busy fighting internet piracy. Because well, he's, he's close to victory, up, damn yeah. it. The, I don't... How old are they now? They're all approaching 50. Uh, they look great for 120. <laughs> Rob Trujillo, <laughs> I don't... The bass player, I don't know how old he is, but... You know they they're gonna keep playing until it's not profitable. They're anymore. gonna keep playing and, until and people keep going to their shows. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's 1991 it's the, anymore. It's it's the it's the purest <laughs> thing I think. You know, the the people who just love that classic black metal music and just won't listen to anything current. As long as there's an, so. as long as that audience still exists, they're probably gonna keep creating albums. And they can go play in Saint Europe. Anger, and people, <laughs> that's the next album. Granted, you know, I liked the the most recent album, Death Magnetic, from That's right. Two thousand. Did I get that for you? No, I think I bought that one okay. legitimately <laughs> on iTunes. I don't think I'll get that for you. <laughs> and I do remember liking that one. I, I listened to it a handful of times and I still can can't go a, back and can say you name a song off of Death Magnetic? Um The Day That Never Comes was the first single and okay. I remember like that that's the weakest song good, on the good, album in good my pop opinion. Quiz. <laughs> But the rest of it, I remember enjoying it, and, there, and the Unforgiven Three, <laughs> Ooh. which I remember liking that one, even though I haven't listened to it for several years. But whatever. So, so I mean, Metallica is Metallica. They're, yeah, they'll they'll never change. I know it's sad. I I, I always wanted to get to that that level of superstardom. <laughs> so your your the moral of the story is you're kind of done with this band. I, I am officially done with Metallica. I don't even have the Black Album anymore because my so mine you, got stolen you lost that in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> and I had listened to it so many times at that point that I was like, I don't Fuck need it. these anymore. Fuck it, who cares? So I, I don't even have it on my iPod. Well, I want to... Th- illegally or legally downloaded. Well, I want to thank you for actually having a sound off this week. <laughs> I, don't have to, Cause, I don't have to scold yeah. you again after the show. The rest of the article just goes on to talk about how great Avenged Sevenfold are and how great the next Metallica. <laughs> so I'm not even going to dignify that with, with a No comment. They're like, we lost a bandmate just like Metallica did. Like, that's not... That doesn't it doesn't make, make you, make you Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're heavy and... I don't know... The, I, well, you know more about Avenged Sevenfold than I, I do, wish I but, didn't. Yeah, but I no know. comment because there they might be Avenged Sevenfold fans, and they might kick my ass. They could probably <laughs> kick my ass. I hope that this doesn't sour your ability to listen to us because we may not like. Your band <laughs> it's anymore. okay. You probably like. I, I probably like music you don't like either, so it's cool. I've been laughing all week at your comment <laughs> when I mentioned that I went to see bands who were all in their forties. <laughs> Black Hole Sun <laughs> <laughs> won't <As> an, come. <laughs> That oh that one's making the list by the okay, way. Okay, good. Black Hole Sun. We, we're, we're, we're seriously gonna make a list, a whole episode it's, dedicated to songs that need to be retired. We have to do a lot of YouTube oh. uh, searching. <laughs> oh well. Well, so this week on my sound off, uh, I don't get to talk about video games much in this show because uh, Adam is not much of a video gamer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still playing uh, my Super Nintendo. Yeah, he's still playing Super Nintendo. So I'm t- so this week I'm gonna talk. I'm, I'm gonna briefly talk about our friends down under. In Australia, they, they, they recently gained a great victory last week when it was announced that Australian politicians have finally acknowledged that adults play video games, too. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I know. They're rated. Who, they, what, <laughs> who didn't know this? Well, you know, there's a lot of... Australia? <laughs> Australia didn't know this, yeah. <laughs> you know, final, Wow. Australia had a rating system just similar to ours. I mean, if you guys are familiar, we have the you know, rated E, rated E10, rated T, and rated M. There's also rated AO, but there's hardly ever games that are... Adult only, but the Australia, the highest rating they have is rated 15 plus, which means you know, you know, games that are meant for adults, you know, they have like you know, sexual <laughs> stuff. You can only play this if you've had 15 or more beers. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> so so games that are you know, mature rated 
in the U.S. are either banned or heavily censored in Australia, which is wow. which sucks. Which sucks balls. Does it, it suck that it badly? It sucks that, balls. It sucks balls. Yeah, especially if you're an adult gamer, because if you're in Australia and you want to play the game in its pure form, you'd have to import it, and you know. Can't you buy it on eBay from America? Well, a lot of gaming consoles are uh, region locked, oh. so you, know, you have to buy. For the most part, you have to get uh, the games. Yeah, I don't get that either. But the, there's that's a whole legal system involved. But the, finally, the ban of video games that are considered, you know, 18 plus will no longer be banned for sale in Australia. And this is a great victory for the video, you know, not only the video game industry, but also the entertainment industry and also free speech in general. The moral of the story, don't censor games. And the entertainment industry is taking a big enough hit anyway. Yeah, really. Because of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know. More power to them. So, you know, if you know anybody in Australia, if, if you're aware of, you know, the, the rating system, you know, wish them congratulations because that's a big victory. <laughs> It really is. I'm, 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 I'm going to post it on Facebook right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm really proud. Congratulations, Australia. I'm really proud of uh, you know Australian politicians to finally acknowledge that your video games are an art form, just like music and movies and 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 books. I mean, and, and it and it there deserves there deserves you know an adult section as well. So congratulations, Australia. If you can have a restaurant. Yeah, if you can have a restaurant, you game. can have you can have your <laughs> Call of Duties and your and shitty I, Halos and. I don't know much about the Australian, you know adult industry but i've heard that it's pretty raunchy <laughs> yeah if so, you can get the weird australian stuff down there why not play a video game right <laughs> i know it's like the video game is tame compared to like just what's on their their everyday oh, TV. This, this video game has zombies we was not i was like oh then again they only have like three channels though, right <laughs> granted so. they only have one in new zealand <laughs> <laughs> they, they also have the you know the the, the flight of the concords yay <laughs> we love them we love the flight of the concords oh, i love brett and jermaine <laughs> Final thoughts, but it's a nice show, Ad. I think that um, it was a pretty good show. Actually, I think it was a great show. It was a great show, yeah. And I appreciate everyone who listens to it. I was really surprised that so many people did. No, I, I was expecting like we found out, five. I, you know, more than just me and Mike listened through <laughs> it once. I was expecting there to be two listens. <laughs> yeah, so like I said last week, uh, please interact with the show. Please comment below. Please message us. Please, uh, if you're like like I mentioned, if you're at a band, if you're an artist, please let us know. And if you'd like to get, we would love to promote. We would you. love to promote you. We'd love to have you. We'd love to interview you. We'd love to get your name out there. We love you know cross promotion. You know we we promote you. You promote our Tell show. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah. And uh, I know right now we just seem like a bunch of goofy guys that are sitting in a room talking. Because because we are. Someday we might be more than that. <laughs> Lovers. <laughs> I, I meant like more. Oh, people would know and you crushed us. my dreams again can, and again and again. <laughs> We Damn your heterosexuality! To... <laughs> we might move to an actual recording studio someday. Someday. Is my wife washing our dogs? Again? I think so. I thought she was carrying a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for sticking stick, uh, sticking around in this episode of the. And feed. even tell us if you think that our show is too long. Yeah, please do. Or we I talked about we, too much. We talk about stuff too much, that wasn't yeah. important. Whatever. But we just <laughs> talk about stuff that's you know interesting to us. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Again, please comment below. Please send us messages. Please share our show. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube because that's going to be our primary channel from now on. YouTube. I'm sorry that uh, we had that. I even had to create a YouTube account. Just to subscribe to I it. have a Gmail account. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm sorry about that whole Podomatic business. Uh, I, I, was, I was looking for some podcasting, pod, podcast hosting websites, and that one came to mind. But uh, you guys were started listening to it and took up half our month's bandwidth in a day. <laughs> Whoa. So I had to I had to cut that out right away. That's crazy that we were <laughs> half our month's yeah. bandwidth. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. I know. That, thank you yeah, again for yeah, everybody. Thank you guys listens. for listening. But please this. comment because we have no idea what you guys. We are don't thinking. know what you. <laughs> we only live by what you guys think. We can be as narcissistic as the next person, but we need <laughs> to know what you feel. <laughs> Tell us we suck. Tell us we're cool. Just put like. I don't yeah, care. I don't care. Yeah. It's not that and hard. Please, and if you do enjoy the show, please share it and you know share with your friends, share with your family, and you know anybody who else might be, who might be interested. So once again, thank you for Adam. I am your co-host Mike, and please join us again next week for the skinny with Mike and Adam. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll we'll come up with a call out sound off. Uh, or, but, but last word. I like rambling play. with the music playing. Ah, oh, you hear that? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that music is great. Bye, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>